you tell us more about the mandate of the foundation and how it came about? The, the foundation was uh, created uh, some 13 years ago, and some years after that, in, in uh, 2017, it became an international organization. The idea was to promote uh, the strategic relationship between the two regions uh, to enhance the visibility of the strategic partnership. What's the impact the foundation is having in the, the Latin American and Caribbean region? Our impact is basically uh, in terms of visibility, of constructing a discourse, of promoting an image. Okay, the image of the Caribbean and Latin America as a region, a vibrant a region. Yes, we construct the region, the image, the political image of the region, and we construct also with our limited uh, capabilities the idea of the existence of a, a relationship between Europe, Latin America, and the Caribbean. What are some of the challenges you're facing at this moment that you think within the next year you'd like to at least see solved? In all the rest of the um, uh, environment of our lives, the challenges are mainly economics. <laughs> We don't have a budget in order to do what everything that we should do or we could do. You're going to have the EU CELAC a summit that will be held in July. What do you hope comes out of this? What are your expectations? Uh, in this summit, we don't, uh, don't expect the discussion of political issues. But it is, it is a start. It is a start. And the idea of having these summits regularly, it's also one of the objectives of the summit. Our guest today is Dr. Adrian Bonilla, who has a doctorate and master's degree in international relations from the University of Miami. He holds a bachelor degree in public and social science from the Central University of Ecuador. Before joining the EU LAC Foundation and becoming its executive director, Dr. Bonilla was National Security of Higher Education with ministerial rank in his country of Ecuador from 2018 to 2019. He also served as Secretary General for the entire region of Latin America Facility of Social Science, FLASCO, from 2012 to 2016, and as Director of Office of Ecuador from 2004 to 2012 of this international academic organization. So I will just start, and I would like to start with a kind of an icebreaker. So I've heard you're from Ecuador. Yes, I am from Ecuador. From Ecuador, and my question to you is, what do you miss the most of being in Ecuador? Oh, a lot of things, but basically food. Food. <laughs> Traditional Ecuadorian food. You, it's a, some kind of nostalgia that is, it is happening to every migrant person. And yes, I miss food, the Ecuadorian soups, the Ecuadorian fisheries, um, everything. Everything. Now, being both from the diaspora, I, I fully agree with you. <laughs> food and music. That's the two things that I miss uh, the most. I don't have a big community here, but I hope that you have a good community around you where you have music, because that's one thing I miss. <laughs> yes, yes. So... To just get into it, the EU Labs Foundation is about 13 years old and was also uh, created by the heads of state of Latin America and the Caribbean. My question to you is, can you tell us more about the mandate of the foundation and how it came about? Yes, well, the, the, the foundation was uh, created uh, some 13 years ago. Um, time was some kind of different of uh, today because uh, uh, in the first decade of this century, the encounters between the heads of the state of Europe, um, Latin America and the Caribbean were very frequent. And the, the agendas were very intense. And the idea of a um, long-term uh, strategic partnership was part of the um, foreign policy of both regions. So they wanted they needed to, to have some, something, some kind of institution in order to organize the agendas, to register 
the discussions to promote the relationship and uh, everything. And uh, they created an, an organization, but they wanted it uh, for tomorrow and uh, the future. And, and they, they founded a civil society organization. In its origins, the ULA Foundation was a civil society organization uh, located in Germany, in Hamburg. And some years after that, in, in uh, 2017, it became an international organization. So that is the idea. The idea was, uh, the mission was uh, to, to uh, strengthen, uh, to promote uh, the strategic relationship between the two regions, uh, to enhance the visibility of the strategic partnership and to include persons and civil societies, uh, organizations within the mandate, the, the declarations, the resolutions of the heads of the state and, and higher authorities. That is the mission of the uh, ULAC Foundation. Thank you. So the foundation aims to transform strategic partnership. Um, so we just spoke about how it was formed, the mandate, but what's the impact the foundation is having in LAC, uh, uh, in the, the Latin American and Caribbean region? I, I, I think that the, the impact is basically uh, a strategic one. And uh, because of the foundation, especially in the last years, the relationship, the idea or the image of having a strategic relationship between the two regions uh, stayed alive. And uh, the, the foundation promoted the, uh, the two regions, organized the different events, uh, uh, promoted some uh, research in the strategic relationship, published some books, uh, called some uh, important persons, and uh, well, that that is the impact. Basically, that is the impact because we are not uh, we are not in traditional in traditional terms um, cooperation organization. We don't have funds to finance activities of third parties, uh, and we, on the other hand, uh, we are not also an international regular organization like. Uh, the Organization of American States, of the Organization of the uh, African Unity, uh, we are something different. Um, uh, our impact is basically uh, in terms of visibility, of constructing a discourse, of promoting an image. Okay, the image of the Caribbean and Latin America as a region, a vibrant a region. Yes, we construct the region, the image, the political image of the region, and we construct also with our limited uh, capabilities the idea of the existence of a, a relationship between Europe, Latin America, and the Caribbean. So this goes very well with Carib Invest TV because we say, you know, bringing the Caribbean together, being in the diaspora, especially, you can't always get a very broad view of what's happening within the Caribbean. And that's why one of the reasons why I liked the, 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 the mission and the statement of the LAC region. But if I were to go to more from a personal perspective, how long have you been associated with the EU LAC uh, Foundation? Well, my mandate is uh, four years long of a, of a uh, that is my term, and I have been in Hamburg directing the the foundation for about uh, three years. So I have one more year, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that is my 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 my, my linkage with the organization. Can you tell? the viewer, what it's like being the executive director of EULAC. What, what has led you to this uh, role and what do you feel you're, you've gotten or given to the role? Well, uh, in, in personal terms, just personal terms, I have learned a lot. I have learned a lot about how the European Union is working, how 
uh, is to deal with the bureaucracy of Brussels, how to, to make uh, uh, present the idea in the different ministers of foreign relations of Latin America and the Caribbean, this kind of, uh, of uh, very, very personal experience is, has been very, very rich. Um, but uh, in, in terms of this uh, organization, what, what we wanted is uh, to make it more visible because of the erosion to say something about the relationship of uh, both regions, we needed to have the foundation very visible in order to protect the foundation as a consequence of it also to, to cover, to protect also the relationship. So we had to organize a lot of events, uh, uh, publishing a lot of uh, different policy papers, policy briefings, uh, uh, using the the social media in order to be pre present in different scenarios. Uh, that that was our, our our mission. That was our task in these uh, years. And uh, I don't know if a consequence of it, of course not. But one of the satisfactory goals uh, in order of the relationship is, is the next summit of heads of state, which is also a very, very, very uh, interesting experience in professional and personal terms, and of course, in terms of the uh, relevance of the foundation also. So we'll get back to the summit that will be held uh, coming up in July. Mm -hmm. What I'd like to ask the next question is, uh, which of the foundation's uh, ongoing or planned projects are you passionate, most passionate about at this moment? I am very happy developing projects and programs on, on knowledge, on promoting the, the encounters and the contacts between the scientific communities of Latin America, the Caribbean and Europe, on the exchanging of persons and knowledge between the higher education institutions of, of, of both regions on having um, uh, uh, different uh, authors and academicians from both regions producing on the relationship. That, that is one of my, my uh, yes. uh, patients, as you say, uh, because in, the, in, the, in my past life, I was a professor. So, uh, and the other topic uh, that is uh, very, very uh, interesting for me is this one of, uh, of, of promoting, uh, of uh, uh, developing uh, multilateralism mm -hmm. as a mechanism of uh, international relationship. And that is very, very interesting because you have in that in that concept, yet, yet you have coincidences, very, very real coincidences between the foreign policies of Europe and the, and the ones of Latin America and the Caribbean. So we've talked about the mandate, we've talked about, you know, your passions within the EU LAC, but what are some of the challenges you're facing at this moment that you think within the next year you'd like to at least see solved? In all the rest of the... Um, uh, environment of our lives, the challenges are mainly economics. <laughs> budget. <laughs> budget. Uh, we don't have a very long, uh, 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 we don't have a budget in order to do what, everything that we should do or we could do. Um, and uh, because of the foundation is uh, uh, alive uh, because of the contributions of the nations and countries uh, and those contributions that uh, has a voluntary character we have to lobby permanently in order to fund our institution that that is the, the main challenge and as as insofar as the relationship is uh, good you have more opportunities but if the relationship has been or, or is uh, less important for the foreign policy of the countries, you, you have more difficulties. But 
that is uh, a must in every organization, civil organization or international organization. But, but in political terms, in political terms, to interest the authorities of the governments in the relationship uh, between both regions. Uh, the, the, the agendas are very complicated. The agendas are very diverse. Latin America is a very heterogeneous with the Caribbean region, very, very heterogeneous. And not every, not every country has uh, uh, the idea of, of having the relationship with Europe as, an, as the most important one, um, for example. And the same in Europe. You have some countries, uh, uh, the, uh, the former colonial powers, the colonial powers of, of uh, the 18th and 19th centuries uh, that have more linkages with the, with the, with the, with the former the Caribbean and the, the former. Yes. And you have a, a, a very intense human mobility between the regions. And uh, it, uh, but, but you have three, four, five countries which are very interested in Latin America. Not every European country has an agenda with Latin America. So the idea is promoting the relationship in every space, in a, every region of uh, both continents. Now, I saw, uh, just to bring more um, current news, like today we had uh, the news whereby the US uh, pledged 100 million to the Caribbean uh, region and the Latin American region. So there is funding that's now flowing into the region. Would you like to see that also happen from a European perspective, that money flows in whereby so, uh, organizations such as the founda uh, as EU LAC uh, Foundation can do more within the region? Not because we are not a, a, an institution of cooperation. We are be a very, very political in some sense institution. It depends on, on, on the will of the heads of the states and higher authorities. Um, but I just want to address that, that money flows in every direction. The investment of Latin Americans in Europe, the acquisition of property by Latin Americans and Caribbeans in Europe, the traveling from Latin America and the Caribbean to Europe, the, well, <laughs> the, it, it, speaking of, of legal activities, but we also, also have to take into account some other kind of money. Uh, the, the 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 resources, the economic resources from Latin America going and, and the Caribbean going to Europe are a huge amount in terms of the relationship at the level of civil uh, societies. So we have uh, uh, in that in that kind of relationship a very symmetrical one uh, um, uh, because of different aspects. So now coming up to the events, because you've touched on that, you had an event on the 11th of May with uh, the EU LAC uh, Gender Equality Forum. Uh, can you give us a bit of uh, background on how this came about and how the event went? Yes, yes. The the, the EU LAC Foundation was uh, um, organizing some two years ago an international women network of, the, of both regions. So, so we have... Um, uh, very important people like, uh, I, I don't know, Rebe Rebecca Greenspan from the PNUDA, uh, the former president, Michelle Bachelet, and uh, very relevant uh, persons in the network and a, a lot of civil society organizations um, working together in the last two years. And as a consequence of it, the ULAC Foundation, um, and because of the common agenda of a social cohesion in, in, in both regions, uh, the ULAC Foundation has uh, um, constructed the uh, issue of gender equity as one of the uh, flagship policies of our organization. Um, so we call uh, uh, international organizations, civil society organizations and governments for one of the civil society forums prepared by the ULAC Foundation in order to produce inputs 
for the discussion, the deliberation of the resolutions and declarations of the summit. We have uh, people coming from the Caribbean, from Latin America, from Europe. Uh, they were at Berlin. They have uh, a, a lot of discussions. We took note of those discussions. We prepared a report and we sent it to the authorities of both regions, which are involved in the uh, writing, the reduction of the final declarations. So now, based on that, you're now going to have in July in Brussels, and I'm located in Belgium, so I know the red tape you're talking about. So you're going to have the EU CELAC um, a summit that will be held in July. What do you hope comes out of this? What are your expectations? The, the fact of having a summit is good news. Only having a, a summit is good news since we have, have not had uh, one yeah. in the last eight years. It uh, shows how, how low was the intensity of the relationship between the two regions. So having a summit it, is good news. Uh, 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 and that, that is in itself a goal accomplished. But what the summit probably would resolve is to strengthen the, the issues of uh, digital transformation, digital exchanging, the uh, issues of uh, uh, environmental policies, uh, prevention of natural disaster, uh, resilience towards the uh, climate uh, change, uh, uh, things like that, uh, in a framework of social cohesion, uh, uh, basically issues related to development, to just development. Uh, in this summit, we don't, uh, don't expect the discussion of political issues. No? And, uh, but it is, it is a start. It is a start. And the idea of having these summits regularly, it's also one of the objectives of the summit. Well, I hope that uh, in July, you at least get the start and it's a good start. For the last part, um, there was a ratification of the Constitution of the Agreement uh, that transforms the EU LAC into an international organization. What does it mean for yourselves, not just for the region, but for the EU LAC Foundation itself? Well, it, it is the transit between being a civil society organization towards an international one. Uh, it it give, gives as a more density in institutional terms. And as an international organization, we have an, another quality when we uh, talk with national authorities of both regions and with other international organizations. So it is a very important of being a different, in, uh, of having a different nature of the institutionality. Well, I can imagine for your tenor that this is one of the highlights becoming more international. And I guess this is the stamp that you will leave uh, once your tenor is over next year at the EU LAC Foundation. But as from the, the organization itself and as giving you the last word, uh, what would you like for if you were to speak to the Caribbean and the, uh, and the Latin American um, uh, yeah, region? There's just the everyday normal man. Can you tell us, you know, what you hope that they understand that will come out of having now EU LAC, not just as a foundation, but an international foundation? As a Latin American, being in the EU LAC foundation, what I would like to address is the, is the need to conceptualize the region in a more solid way. Uh, the need of the Caribbean countries at the and the Latin American ones to see themselves as a region and not only uh, different members who are together for two or three uh, occasions yearly. Um, uh, to think as a region, uh, to think as a region 
but with a lot of common antecedents, a lot of common um, necessities uh, to think as uh, uh, to think the existence of the region, um, and, and I think this is one of the consequences, non intended maybe, of, of being an international organization for Black Foundation that we help to build up the idea of regionalism. Not, not it is not necessary in Europe yet because they have the European Union, but it is very, very necessary in Latin America and in the Caribbean. Now, with that said, I really once again uh, iterate that, you know, Carbon Vest TV aligns very much with your mission. We always say we see it as a region, not just as individual islands or languages. It's a region that can, if it starts working with itself, it becomes even stronger. You know, I always look at the Jamaican saying, out of many, we are one. And I believe that if we really look at that, the Caribbean and Latin American can do amazing things in the next couple of years. So once again, <laughs> thank you so much. Uh, you're the executive director EU LAC, Dr. Adrian Bonilla. Did I say it correctly? <laughs> Perfectly. I used the Spanish that I can remember, but thank you so much for your time. And uh, once again, we had a rocky start, but it was a wonderful uh, opportunity to meet you. And who knows, maybe we meet each other in Brussels uh, during the summit in June. I'm sure of that. So thank you very much for, 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 for this conversation and hasta luego. Hasta luego. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.